God. I always enjoy hearing her preach. Amen. 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 Power. <laughs> yes, I do. Good <laughs> We did have an awesome time yesterday. We truly did. And what Elaine Thomas brought to us, women, um, really, I think we all could be in agreement that the men should have been here also. I mean, not should have been here. We need to have Elaine come back and speak to us um, as the people of God because she addressed it spiritually, addressed our, our eating habits, Spiritually, and she backed it up with scripture, which um, I have not even, when I read those scriptures, I never even thought of them in the way, in the context that she presented them to us. So, um, and I learned a lot. And, and because it was a smaller group, we were able to ask her questions. And um, it, was, it was just very, very good. So I'm, I'm thinking that we need to do that again. And then speak to the whole congregation so that we can all be healthy because we got a lot of work to do. We got to fill these chairs. Yes, we do. The Spirit of God's going to draw, but where were His feet? Where are His voice in the volcano community and beyond? So, uh, and He's called us to do it. So, amen. And thank you for what you shared this morning. Because yes, the Spirit of God is in this place. Amen. And we never, ever, ever want to take it for granted. Um, so we honor him this morning. We thank him because he's so faithful and he knows our hearts. He knows that we're hungry for his presence. Just want to um, give you a few scriptures that the, the Lord gave me this morning before I bring the word that I was given. First scripture is uh, out of Psalms 52, 8. These are scriptures that I want to use to encourage me this morning. Psalm 52, 8 says, But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. Amen? Amen. You can take that, take that word this week. Put it in with your devotions if you want. If you, I, I am. I'm just going to just get that really deep in my knower that I am like a green olive tree. Olive trees have are, are um, full of oil, so I'm full of oil, and I'm green. I'm full of life in the house of the Lord, and I can trust in the mercy of God. He's a merciful God forever and ever. Because I'm a child of God. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. These are just scriptures I feel like we need to keep in us because more of the Spirit of God is moving in this church, more we get attacked by the enemy and we say, yay, go God. Because if we're being attacked by the enemy, that means that we're a threat to him. Remember what Pastor Kevin said, are you ready for the fight? Well, yes we are. So we want to be fully equipped with the word of God. So Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, lost my place because I'm not excited. He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. That's a promise. He's Amen. never going to leave you or forsake you. Never, 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 never. We love him. We want to serve him all the days of... I would, not, I would not do anything to compromise my salvation and lose the promises of God and lose the blessings that he has on my life. And struggles come. We all have struggles. We all have challenges. We, we prayed for Bob this week, believing that God was going to touch him, and now the doctors are going to give him good scoldings. And, <laughs> and you will stand with you as you implement your life changes. 
And do not grieve, uh, Ephesians 4.30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God for, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. You are sealed. <clears throat> it's like Tupperware, only even more pop. You're sealed. And nothing's going to snatch you out of, the, out of the hands of the Father. You're sealed. You feel sealed this morning? Yes. Okay. And we prayed over your baby today. She's sealed. The enemy cannot touch her. Or you. Or your family. Amen. So, just some scriptures that I really blessed my husband and I this morning as we were doing our devotions. And I thought, I'm just, we need... We need to not just keep that for ourselves because they were powerful and we need to just share. Um, and so you you do what you um, want to with those, but for me, those were like, I needed that this morning. I wanted to speak about um, knowing God's love. And I know that when I first came here, I said to you that the Father sent me because he wants me to tell you that he loves you. Remember, everyone? Yes. He loves you. He still loves you. Last Sunday, it was like he was saying, I love you. I love you. You don't need to carry those burdens anymore. I love you. Bring them to me. I love you so much that I sent my son to die for you. And there, I think that there, I believe, and I, I know that because of reports that people gave me, that there were a lot of things that were broken off. And there were yokes that were destroyed and there were burdens that were lifted. And God is doing a great work in this church because he needs us to be strong, healthy uh, people of God for the work that he has for us ahead of us. And then Pastor brought a powerful uh, word about being prosperous in the Lord and how to know the riches of God and have those riches in our lives, not so that we can be living in great big mansions, but that we can build the kingdom of heaven because Jesus is coming soon. He could come today and we're not ready. So it makes me think he's not going to come because he's still looking at us and going, you're not ready yet. You're not the bride that I'm, I'm looking for, but you, you're getting there. You're getting there as you work on yourself and you read the word of God and you start stepping out by faith. So, knowing God's love, God's perfect love is called agape. Does everybody know that? Agape love. And just a little definition of agape is the covenant love God has for us. It's divine and it's unconditional. No strings attached. He just loves you. How wonderful would it be if each one of us could say that about ourselves? That I can just love you. Even with all your pimples and your blemishes and all the things that you and the things you do that I don't really like, but that's okay because I love you. We're not we're not quite there yet, but we're going to get there as we follow and we get into God's word. First John four, and I'm just going to go ahead and read it because this whole uh, what the Lord has given me is based on these scriptures. First John four, if you've got your um, your your, uh, your guide through life with you, your Bible. What is it called? Sword. Your sword. Your sword of the Spirit. The Word of God. First John 4, verses 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins. Beloved of God, so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. How awesome is that? 